Greetings all, it's the Devious Monkey and my queen, and we are going to World Market, which we do maybe once or so a year. Is that. Yeah, and of course, it's a crappy day out where it's not raining. It's that misty shit that gets all over everything, but is still equally annoying. And, and it's a little bit colder, but that's okay, because we don't care because we're not at work. Yeah. And today, Dumb Monkey remember to turn on the freaking microphones and I can see the sound little thingies <laughs> jumping so I won't lose all my footage. And yesterday I did film several times and uh, yet again in Dumb Monkey, you can tell I'm in vacation mode, I can't think. I forgot to take the lens off of manual focus. So everything except for that wrap up in the studio was so unfocused that there was no way I was gonna post it. So that's why you didn't get a video yesterday. But this is going to be fun today, so let's go shopping. Hey kids, back in the studio, obviously. We had a fun time. We walked all through World Market, and thank Zeus, we avoided uh, a number of accidents that were on the other side of the highway going back across the tunnel into Virginia Beach, and it was backed up for miles when we were on our way to the World Market. Fortunately, when we came back, it wasn't as bad. I mean, it was still backed up a little bit, but it wasn't too bad, so I immediately, once I got over the the, through the tunnel and over the bridge, we immediately turned off and went the back way, which is more scenic and nice. The thing that was really like, oh, is that because there was so much fog and that misty, rainy shit, there were so many places where there were just amazing opportunities for pictures, theoretically. First of all, there's no way I'm stopping my freaking vehicle on the side of the bridge or anywhere along there near the tunnel system. But at one point we looked up and there were literally like all these pylons, I call them ghost pylons because you could see all the pylons sort of going off into the close distance as the fog basically ate them up. Very cool picture in my head. I was like, damn it, I wish I could stop right here and take that picture. Then there was another spot where we just had turned off the highway and started to go the back way. And there was like a private lot that on, a, on the other side of it, there were docks. And there, were, there was literally like a bird on every single pylon that was there. And I thought that would have been a great picture. And there were many more along the way, but it was kind of like, again, it was like misty and shitty. And I just didn't feel like stopping. But in my head, I took a lot of great pictures. One of the things I wanted to talk about was I said, you know, that I was paring everything down. I've already disconnected the two ZV-1s. So the one that would normally be in front of me right here and the one that's up overhead. I took those out and I moved them off away. After I did that, I had to disconnect a lot of the cabling here, the wires, power and sound and so on and so forth and all that shit. And then get this set up so that I could hook the A7C up in a way that got what I wanted in the screen, but not any more than that. I didn't do that until just now. I actually reconfigured all of the plates and, and, and like how far I have them mounted on, on the brackets and all that kind of stuff to get the camera as far forward as possible so that I could get the framing that I wanted. It actually worked. So I have the tripod moved as far forward as it'll go into this desk. And then each plate, I had to move everything as far forward as possible so that I could, again, get all this stuff in where I wanted it and cut out the stuff that I didn't want. Took a little bit, but I got it. So now I have everything ran the way that I want it for now. I mean, this is gonna be an, a constantly evolving thing. Since you know I change my studio like every three to six months when I get bored. 
or I just, just want to change things up. So for now, as you can see, everything is in here. It fits away. It usually is if I'm going to put it on the tripod, which I won't do all the time. At this point right now, it, the, the camera, like if I, if I put my arms straight out, I can actually reach behind the camera. That's how close it is to me because I have the a7C with the 20 millimeter f1.8 on there right now. And then I have the Ninja hooked up, which is why I keep looking down below. I have the Ninja hooked up to it. I have my overhead mic hooked up to it. And then I have power going to it. So I'm not draining the power while I sit in here and do 10,000 different things. The other stuff has all been moved away. So the two ZV-1s, the I mean, I got rid of the softbox a while ago. That's going to go down in, into the garage studio, which is already there. So I went back to this Photo Deox LED panel, and then I totally have a jury rig where, where I have the round reflector portion that went on that SL60, and I have that basically gorilla taped to the diffusing panel that's in front of all the LEDs. And then on that, I have another like one of those little shower cap diffusers that I put on the reflector and then I shoved a honeycomb grid into it to hold that in place and then I have rubber bands going over that in addition to the gorilla tape to hold it all somewhat centered on that panel and and it's working pretty good I think I you know I'm pretty happy with the lighting on it and then of course I have my aperture MC there the aperture MC way over there as my fill lights and then my other for aperture MC lights behind me. Plus I just had those colored uh, LED fake candles in those lanterns just because I wanted to put something in there that wasn't too obnoxious that I could also m move really easily to dust because I need to dust all this stuff. So sorry, I'm not looking at the camera. I'm still looking at what I'm pointing out. And of course the glorious golden monkey that will stay there for a while. The clock is actually down there. You can't see it, but there it sits. I had thought about completely getting rid of this overhead, what was an, it was a monitor stand that I had everything mounted to, but then I thought to myself, well, that if I was going to get rid of the desk altogether, then I would do that. But if I get rid of the desk, I have nothing to hang the light or the microphone to, and I don't want to put that much more onto this contraption because I don't even know like where I can put it that it would make sense that it's not in the way of something. I do have a cold shoe mounted to the bottom of this Ninja. So in theory, I could put the microphone under there. And because I'm not doing overhead shots now, I don't have to worry about any of this shit that's in front of me below the camera lens. So I may do that. And then I just have to figure out what I would do with the light or if I need it at all. Um, I mean, it all sort of works well, but if I got rid of that light, I mean, I do have a clamp. I can probably clamp it over there. So I don't know. I just sort of talked myself into doing that. But then if I get rid of that, you know, like why get rid of it if I'm not going to get rid of the desk? And I do like having the desk here. And then I have my iPad mini down here in front of me. That works. I also have my AirPod here. So I think I'm just going to leave this the way that it is because right now there's no point in me getting rid of it. I, I had this little thing over here in the corner, this little, uh, like almost like a, it, I guess it's supposed to be an end table, a nightstand end table. And I just have like filters on it and I have my Surface Go tablet there and, and just a couple other things. So that can stay too. I kind of had this all self-contained so that if you come over into this corner, this is what it is. Now I'm going to show you all this stuff after I take this, the A7C off of here. I looked at my two ZV-1s sitting over there on my table and I thought to myself, am I being impulsive and stupid, dumb monkey-ish, if I get rid of both of them, even though I haven't used them all that much? Well, I mean, other than the one that I had mounted here, then if I was shooting in studio, yeah, I was using it all the time. But I also decided that, well, all right, I wasn't really using them and I like shooting on the A7C. And now that I have this whole setup the way that I want it, really all I have to do is just slide the A7C onto the Arca clamp, twist it down, put it in place, plug three cables into it, and I'm done. And I'm good to go and I can, I can film whatever I want. Or I can not plug it in up there and I can set it down on the desk at an angle to me like I've been doing, which gives just something different than just me being straight on, and I can use the Rode Wireless Go. So I thought, okay, well, I'll do that maybe. But to get back to what I was saying, I was thinking that maybe I shouldn't get rid of both ZV-1s because it is a really good, convenient camera, and I do have a lot of stuff for it that I can continue to use that, for the sake of convenience, I would use. But I'm also trying to think in, in my monkey melon, do I really need it? 
am I really using it or am I just trying to talk myself into keeping it because that's what I do and that's why I have all these damn magical drawers filled with crap that I don't use haven't touched for years and it needs to go away and I should probably get rid of it now before later because the price that I could get for it is going to continue to drop as Sony you know keeps spitting out new cameras and all that kind of stuff you know so I'm kind of going all over the place I haven't decided it's only Thursday I'm probably not going to do any of that until later this weekend if you know deciding what I'm going to sell taking pictures of it and getting rid of it yeah <sighs> So that's that. But for now, that's really all I wanted to talk about. I'm, you know, I want to show you all the stuff that's going on here. Okay, so I'm going to give you a little tour here of the studio. Uh, it's been a while since I've actually done that. I, didn't, I kind of wasn't sure what I've showed you or not, but here's what we got going on. So this is pretty much the newest addition right here. This is that rugged, uh, like a dehumidifier, humidifying? I don't know what the hell it is. Basically, it's just a humidity dust controlled cabinet, so you can put your stuff into it. So it's kind of hard to see, but, and I don't want to pull everything out, but basically, I got lenses, I got the big lens in there, you know, my action cameras, I got a bunch of lens caps and stuff. I have to decide what all is going to stay in there and, you know, what gets sold, but you can set the temperature. I mean, you can set the humidity level, you can't set the temperature. And that just keeps everything nice and clean and fungus free or whatever the hell grows inside the lenses. All right, this is going to change. This has always been my little battery station, but literally the only one of these things that I use is my Sony batteries. All the rest of this shit I don't use anymore because I don't use those action cameras. And anytime I use the action cameras, I just keep the same battery in it and I use an external like one of those power grips. Here's where I keep all my stuff. And this, if there's one thing that stresses me out, it's this table because I end up getting lazy and I start stacking shit all over it. And you know, then it just gets all dusty and dirty and in the way and all that stuff. So here you can see I have my two ZV-1s. I have the Feel World monitor, which I'm not using because that's what I was using for the overhead. Now I'm gonna use that. I already have it all checked out so that I can put that on top of this A7C when I'm out doing whatever the hell it is I'm going to do. And then, you know, for now, I have this out just because I was playing with them. It's my A7R4 with the Sigma 105 1.4. I don't always leave all of these tripods out here, but I've literally been using them all over the past couple of days. This is the studio, all right there. That's the only little corner. If I back out here, this is the office that's the studio. So that's what I've got all this stuff rigged out for. I have the little desk here. There's my tripod. And here's the little contraption, you know, that I still have the Indie Pro stuff on there so I can run it off of these D taps and everything. And then I pretty much have everything plugged into, you know, these power strips that I've got at various places. But all these power strips are plugged into smart plugs. So that I can shut them off. This is what has changed. I moved that forward all the way up to the edge of the desk and slid all these plates all the way forward as far as they'll go. So that way I can have the camera mounted as far forward as possible. So basically the camera lens comes out like right in front of the Ninja. And then here's a little light contraption I have, this photo deox, you can see from behind here. So the photo deox thing, I have that also plugged into power, so I'm not using the batteries. And then we're all good to go there. And then this is that diffuser that are on, is on the panel in front of the LEDs, which you can see. And then here on these little spots is where I have the Gorilla Tape. And then I have my ghetto rubber bands holding it on with the shower cap and the honeycomb so that it directly lights me. And all that is mounted to this newer ball head, which is connected to this monitor mount by the screw here. And that's one of the reasons why I got this particular screen mount as it was suggested because it has this spot right here where you can conveniently bolt in a ball head. And then I'm using this GoPro mount. It's almost like a gorilla pod type mount. And then I just have uh, one of the bases screwed into the top of it so that I can put in this Movo VXR10 microphone. And then I'm using this Camvate arm with a clamp, and I have one of the aperture lights screwed into that. And that's basically it. You know, there's that little end table thing that I was talking about that I'd kind of like to get rid of. There's the clock that everybody hates. And that's pretty much it. You know, I kind of mounted up this 
these little uh, DeWalt holders. And then I just had this like old selfie stick that I got from my company as, a, as like a, a cheap shitty gift at one of the national sales meetings. And it has like a little mount there that you can screw into whatever. And I'm using an aperture sort of ball head type device to mount into the bottom of one of these MCs. And then I just have the cable wrapped all along it there. And that's that. Sorry for the jitteriness. I keep forgetting that Study Shot sucks and that I'm actually hand holding this. But that's pretty much the studio right there. You know, I'm trying to, to keep all the junk to a minimum, but that's all the, the power grips, the Rode Wireless Go stuff and the power for all the aperture lights and all that stuff if I needed to charge them. Thankfully, I don't because I had them all pretty much mounted to power, which is, as I showed you before, up behind the bear here. So all those are going through, as you can see, my sort of ghetto tape job here where I just bought white tape, drilled the hole in the back, and have that all running behind there so that those all have power because it sucks to have to remember to plug them in and obviously even while I was filming one time they started to shut off on me so that's that this is me in my studio this is where the magic happens I just thought I'd show you everything since I'm constantly describing stuff and forgetting that I should actually be shooting b-roll and telling you where everything is so that's it this is the devious monkey studio as of December 30th we'll see how long it lasts we'll see what else I come up with to change it but for now there you go okay so there you see it that's the Devious Monkey Studio. We're gonna see what happens as we go forward. I'm back on the road next week, so that's gonna change a lot of stuff. I won't be doing this in here every day. Uh, now that I've got the flow kind of going on the MacBook Air M1, where I'm just putting everything off of the card onto the computer, editing, and then deleting everything, that's gonna make my editing process that much faster and smoother, I hope. So that's really all I've got for you. There's no point in blathering on. If you have any comments, questions, suggestions, as always, leave them down below. Be sure to like and subscribe. And remember, kids, forward and up.